And hello, everybody. Let's get started with the course. So we had a, sun, uh, a snow day uh, last Wednesday, so our first lecture uh, didn't happen. So what I'm doing now is doing a pre-recorded lecture on the introduction material for the course. So help, hopefully this can get us back on track and uh, we can we can really dig into the technical topics uh, once we start the real lectures this Monday. Uh, so welcome. This is uh, ECEN 3010 and MCEN 3017 cross-referenced, cross-listed. And this is a, uh, a circuits and electronics course. So what I'd like to walk you through today is a course introduction in this video. And uh, just talk about the logistics of the course, talk about uh, issues like grading and homework and assignments and how we're going to handle that. Okay. So my name is Bill Newhall. There is my email. My office hours will generally be right after class, right after the live lecture on Mondays and Wednesdays. And I encourage you to come, stop by, chat about anything, uh, ask questions about homework or other assignments. Um, and you're welcome to stop by and just uh, listen in if you have no questions. So you can listen to the conversation if you'd like. We have four teaching assistants this semester, uh, Praneeth, Shreya, Kevin and Diraj, and uh, they will all be helping you in the lab. So they will be running the lab, grading the labs, and uh, they have taught this course before, so you've got really some good help during this course in lab. Uh, the class webpage is the Canvas page, so I hope you've seen that. If you haven't, please go to the Canvas page and check that out. The textbook is Hambly's Electrical Engineering Principles and Applications. Make sure you have or get the seventh edition because homework problems will be given out of the seventh edition. If you have the global edition or the international edition, even though it might say seventh on it, those homework problems are generally different than the regular seventh edition of the book. So the cover should look like this. Okay, so if you don't have that book or if you have a hard time uh, finding that book, contact me. Uh, we'll get you hooked up with that. So this course, this course is all about developing abilities in analysis, design, test, and troubleshooting uh, of analog and digital circuits. So I like to start the course off with a with a survey, but since this is pre-recorded, we're we're not going to do the survey. But I usually ask folks, well, do you have any experience with electrical or electronic? concepts? And I hope the answer is yes, because typically you've gone through a, a physics course, which introduced the concept of charge, of current, of voltage. Maybe you got into some RC circuit work. So so that's typically a, a yes. Um, and usually in the intro courses like physics, you've talked about Ohm's law, Kirchhoff's laws, um, uh, KVL, KCL, Kirchhoff's voltage law, Kirchhoff's current law. And uh, so you've had some experience of that with that, probably. Um, I imagine you've, if you've worked with any circuits material in physics, you talked about resistors, capacitors, and inductors. Now, this forms the foundation of what we're going to talk about in this class. I don't expect you to remember everything you've ever learned about these topics. We are going to spend the first week or two reviewing these topics. So don't worry if you don't have everything. Uh, worked out and, and memorized about these topics, we will go over those. So the next set of topics I expect will be new, such as Thevenin equivalent circuits, um, impedance, and phasers. That's probably new to you. If it's not, great. Um, uh, I hope to strengthen your knowledge in those. Uh, we'll also be talking about transistors, uh, op amps, and microprocessors. So many of you might have had experience with an engineering e uh, a a introduction course uh, that, that might have used Arduinos or similar microcontrollers. So you might have had some experience there, but we're going to uh, use all of that material uh, to build up. Oh, going the wrong way here. Uh, to build your understanding of analysis, design, test, troubleshooting, right, um, using test equipment for circuits and electronics. Okay, so that's the goal of this course. I hope you come out of this course understanding uh, the basics so that you can 
work as a mechanical engineer or otherwise non-electrical engineer uh, with electrical engineers so, so that you can effectively work with them, lead teams, things like that. So the course format, uh, you will have regular lectures Mondays and Wednesdays where I, I will lead those lectures. Uh, you'll learn new material. We will review some material from the past and we will work example problems. I like to work example problems on the whiteboard. You'll see my setup when we get to the first lecture. And, uh, and, and you're welcome to ask questions during the, the Zoom lecture. Um, and we'll get those questions answered during class or you're welcome to join during office hours. We will have quizzes and these quizzes will be short questions on very fundamental topics. These are essentially take home quizzes. You will work them by downloading the assignment off of Canvas, work them, submit them. Um, you'll, you'll see how to do that on Canvas. Uh, the quizzes will strengthen your knowledge so that you can work the more complex homework problems. So uh, these problems are generally uh, a little more than the fundamentals. You'll actually work some practical problems and uh, submit the homework via Canvas. You will have labs where you will design, construct, and test circuits. So we really have some good lab equipment uh, for you to work with in the ITLL oscilloscopes, power supplies, function generators, voltmeters, ammeters, things like that. And so you will design, construct, and test and troubleshoot circuits when you get into the lab. Um, I understand you've already been, well, I know you've already been in the lab to form your lab groups. And um, you should be, if you haven't already, working on getting your component kits. And then next week, Friday, uh, that will be the first lab. Check out the schedule. I'll show you where that schedule is. You'll you'll work the, your first lab and work with the equipment. And finally, the course will include exams. There will be three exams, exam one, exam two, and the final exam. The exams, exams will be based on class material uh, and lab material. So it's all one integrated course with class, lecture, and lab. So I like to show what I call a roadmap of the course. This course includes three or four electrical engineering courses, I like to say. Um, and I like to say that I, I've taken sort of the, the best topics off of these courses, out of these courses, and combined them into one course. So you get a, a good overview of what electrical engineers get as uh, fundamentals. And again, to build your fundamental knowledge so that you can work in industry on products and research that involve electronics and work on teams that have electrical engineers. So we'll start in with what I consider the circuits section of the course. We'll cover basic electrical theory, analysis of DC circuits. We'll cover transient circuits. That's where you'll get into um, non-constant voltages, time varying voltages and time varying currents. And then we'll talk about uh, analysis of alternating current circuits, AC circuits. Then we'll move on to the electronics portion of the course, where we will look into some very practical, very real uh, electronics components that are common. Uh, we will look at semiconductors, including diodes and bipolar junction transistors. And then we'll step into some integrated circuit work using operational amplifiers. And we'll talk about, for example, how you can make an amplifier to multiply a voltage by 10 so that you could scale a sensor's output voltage to the input voltage of an analog to digital converter um, or an instrumentation, uh, a, a measurement recorder. Then we'll step into digital systems. We'll talk about digital logic and systems. Um, I'll introduce you to logic gates and uh, different number systems that are used by microcontrollers, microprocessors, and computers. And then we will do a survey of microcontrollers. So we'll talk about using microcontrollers, uh, uh, the fundamental concepts, what goes on inside of a microcontroller, um, and that will cover digital systems. And finally, we will connect, connect you with the physical world by talking about uh, motors and uh, servos. Okay, so we'll talk about DC motors, stepper motors, servos, then we'll step into some practical applications and sensors, depending upon how much time we have at the end of the course. 
but we'll talk about um, temperature sensors, light sensors, pressure sensors, things like that, and more applications, again, depending on the time remaining at the end of the course, depending upon the pace of the class. So that's the roadmap. That's the entire course on one slide. Again, I like to say this, these are the best topics, just deep enough so you get an understanding of several electrical engineering courses um, uh, to give you an idea of, well, what you will be talking about with electrical engineers um, or working with when you have uh, an electrical system built into a product or as maybe instrumentation in your research. Okay, let's get into some of the logistics of the class or so our classroom environment. Please ask questions. I know we're remote, um, uh, but uh, unmute, uh, shoot me a chat. Um, if I don't see your chat message, unmute, shout out, and I'll get to your questions. And uh, please contact me if there are if there are any problems. Okay, I'm happy to help. If there's any issue with um, the video, the audio, the class environment, problems, um, you know, with anything, just please let me know, and I will do my best to help you. So for lecture, the online resources are, well, Zoom um, for the live lectures. Uh, we will have live interaction. Again, ask questions. Um, I will work problems. I, I will present new material. Uh, we will have Canvas as the basis for our class webpage. That will be the source of your assignments. I will show you where the schedule is on Canvas so you can see the whole course mapped out right now from the beginning to the end. Um, and other course information like the syllabus, um, the, the Zoom links, the TA office hours, things like that. Okay, you will submit assignments through Canvas um, as well as downloading assignments from Canvas. So we will use Slack as uh, a mechanism, sort of as a message board so that um, we can communicate about uh, different homework assignments, lab assignments, um, exam problems. And so you can ask questions on Slack, I will respond, the TAs respond, will respond. And I encourage you to also contribute when you know the answer to a question, um, answer your, your fellow students in the class. If, if you um, have either a maybe a solution or a different solution or a different way to look at a problem because there are many different ways to approach uh, circuits problems. So please ask questions, I will help, the TAs will help and contribute and, and help others. OK, and if, if you have a question, I, I would ask that, uh, you know, like about a homework assignment, how to work a homework assignment. You're, you just got stuck or need help getting started. Please post that to the Slack homework channel. Um, if you email me, what I'll ask you to do is, well, please post this on the Slack homework channel so that I can answer it or someone else can answer it and that everybody can see the response. And that way that keeps the ideas flowing uh, throughout the class. We will be using clickers. So iClicker Reef, I believe, is still the name of the software or the app that you use. Uh, I will ask questions during the lecture, and you will respond to questions during the lecture using the clicker. So please make sure your clicker is registered for um, ECEN 3010 or MCEN 3017. Uh, make sure that class is listed uh, on your iClicker account so that you can respond to questions in class. So let me know if there's any problem seeing or hearing the class material, um, or if there are any general audio or video problems, you know, such as, you know, let me know if the screen's out of focus when I'm on the whiteboard, or if you can't hear me clearly, something might be wrong on my end, and I want to fiz fix it so that you can, you can see everything. Okay, so that's our classroom environment. We will hold lectures via Zoom. And these lectures will be synchronous. So I will work circuits and electronics theory and example problems uh, through slides and, uh, and whiteboard problems. I'll give uh, whiteboard talks for some of the theory material, but generally I'll, I'll start out the class using slides. There will be clicker questions, as I mentioned, and these classes, these lectures will be recorded, including uh, uh, video and audio of live questions. So if you ask questions during the class um, or if you want to go see, you know, you missed a lecture for some reason and you want to know what questions the, the uh, others have asked, you can get that through the recorded lectures. So homework is available on the course website. It's on camp 
uh, Canvas. And the uh, homework is due as posted on the website. So please check the time due. Okay, there is a date due and there's a time due. And that's that's a hard deadline. I'd like to be consistent with everybody so that everybody has the same deadline. So, so please uh, check the time due. Homework is generally due um, uh, at, at right, right as class starts. So that's the deadline. The time is posted there. there so please, please take a look at that. Um, because I want to apply the same criteria uh, to everybody, be consistent with everybody in the class, I do not accept late homework. Okay, so so late homework will not be accepted. So please check that due time when you're submitting your homework. Also, don't resubmit your homework after the due time because what happens is your original submission is replaced by the late submission. And I don't see the original submission. Um, and so that's like sort of like changing your answers after the due time. So um, any any uh, resubmission after the due time will be uh, considered a late submission and it, you, you won't get credit for it. So please don't do that. Um, follow the instructions about the submission. This is given in uh, the PDF file that you will download for your assignments. And for homework, I encourage you to work with others. So working with others, I permit, I encourage, because as I mentioned, there are many ways to solve circuits problems. And so if you solve a circuits problem one way, you get an answer, someone else solves it another way, they get an answer, your answers are the same, you're probably uh, on the right track. But in the end, please submit your own, uh, your own homework, okay, so. And also keep on, keep your supporting work, hang on to your supporting work for your homework so that you have it to study for exams. <clears throat> so quizzes, so quizzes, as I mentioned, will emphasize the basics, the fundamentals. Most of these quizzes will be toward the beginning of the course, right? There will be a total of about five quizzes, and many of them will be held just in the first few weeks of class. Um, that's because I want to make sure the, that, that we all have the fundamentals understood before we move on to the more complex material. You will work these quizzes individually outside of class. All right, so uh, work on them, work on them alone. Um, they, they should be basic enough, easy enough so that you can work these and solve them and get the right answer yourself. I will be happy to talk about quiz questions during office hours. So if you don't, if you're not sure, stop by office hours, I will work through that material and we'll make sure you do well on the quizzes. But I ask that you do those alone. On Canvas, you can ask questions not on Canvas, on Slack, you can ask questions about quizzes. I would ask if you're responding to a question from someone else, as, as I will do myself, don't just give the answer. Don't give the answer. Um, you can give hints throughout or approaches, describe your approach, things like that uh, on, on Slack to help folks. I will do the same thing. And uh, But I ask that you just don't post the the final answer that you get so that everybody has a chance to work the problems uh, to the point where the material is understood for the exams. Okay, and again, late quizzes I don't accept, just to be consistent with everybody, so be sure to keep an eye on the time due for each quiz. Okay, and again, resubmissions after the due time uh, will be late, so please don't do that. You won't get credit if you resubmit a quiz set of answers after the due time. So you should be able to resubmit answers before the due time if you decided you changed an answer, but just don't do it after the due time. So exams, the dates are on the schedule on Canvas, and these are targets. I generally hold exams on the planned dates, but snow days and other things might change exam dates. So um, please keep an eye on those dates as fairly firm, but they might change. Um, and please try to arrange any travel or vacation plans if you have to miss class um, around not conflicting with those exam times. All right, let's talk about lab. So in lab, um, you will be building real circuits, real practical circuits. You'll be starting out with uh, simple circuits that are more recipe-like, I'll say. But then by the end of the course, uh, you will be doing your own design 
Um, specifically in this class, it will be a, uh, an infrared light detector circuit that serves as an infrared remote control tester. So by that time in the course, you will be able to, um, to make your own design selections. Everybody may have a little different design. No one will probably have the same values of components in their design. So we start out a little, uh, you know, recipe like for your labs and move to you, you do a design with guidance. I will give you guidance on that. You will have all the building blocks in order to do your own designs. Okay. Okay. So lab in lab, you will bis, bis, build, test, and troubleshoot circuits in the lab. You'll start with the basic circuits, as I mentioned, and then move toward designs of your own. You will work in teams of three. So uh, you should have your teams now. I know attendance changes a little bit as we start the course, um, but uh, uh, make sure you have a team of three. Um, if you don't have a team of three, um, or, or you're alone, I should say, something like that, we will work things out so we can get you into a team. Uh, so contact your TAs if you're not on a team or you haven't formed that yet, or just show up in lab, we will get you on a team. So you will do your design work, right? Your design work and your, your prep work for lab prior to the lab period. And that will be in the form of a pre-lab. The pre-lab has a lot of information that will speed up your performance in lab. Okay, so if you do the pre-lab, do all the work, do the reading, it should really pay off by speeding up speeding up the work in, in the lab. Um, and you should be able to get your labs done within the lab period. So you will build and test during the lab, ter lab period after you've submitted your pre-lab. So do your design, then in lab, build your circuit, test it, get it to work, um, document it. If you do not have a computer account, in the ITLL, or if you don't have or want, um, if you don't have and you do want access to the ITLL after certain hours, uh, that's card access, uh, you must take a 30 minute ITLL orientation prior to the first lab. Okay, so if you get on the internet and you search Colorado ITLL orientation, the lab page shows up um, or your TAs have that. Uh, link. So take that orientation. It's actually a good orientation if you haven't taken it yet. Um, it gives you an introduction to the facilities in the ITLL, the capabilities. So um, so you, you, you will need that for computer access, computer account access in the ITLL. So what to bring to lab? Bring a, uh, a USB memory stick. I think these oscilloscopes still take a USB memory stick for capturing waveforms. Um, bring bring your phone if it has a camera because you'll be taking photos of your completed circuit. You'll be taking photos of your setup. This is just like an engineering report or some kind of systems engineering report that you would submit, you know, at work, right? So in presumably 18 to 24 months, maybe a little more from now, you'll be doing research or be, be working at a job where you'll have to submit engineering reports or at least document your work. That's what this is intended to be like, uh, more like the real world than a creative writing report, right? So, so bring uh, bring a phone that uh, where you can take photos and include those photos in the placeholders where I ask for photos in in the lab reports. The test equipment is really good in the ITLL. Um, you will get scope probes um, and test equipment. Scope probes, test leads. You know the banana test lead, banana connector test leads. They're available um, uh, on the wall in the ITLL. So take a look at that. Your TAs will show you where that is. The test equipment's on a bench in the ITLL, um, and then you will return this equipment generally at the end of the lab. But if you have anything at the end of the course that you've, you're hanging on to in your locker, you've got to be sure to return that. So test equipment. Um, many people have problems with the test equipment. I'll tell you, in my experience, in my own personal experience using test equipment in a lab, um, when something doesn't work and I think the test equipment is broken, it's usually me. It's usually not the test equipment. It's usually my design or the way I'm using the equipment or the way I have the equipment connected to the circuit. It's usually me. Maybe, maybe you're ta more talented at electronics than I am, but I'm just saying um, the equipment's probably not broken. Uh, uh, so, so first look at your circuit, 
um, ask your TAs, uh, try to troubleshoot. The one thing you may find where it is a an equipment, not yeah. issue, but condition, is that if someone um, connects a, let's say, an ammeter, you'll have a multimeter. If someone connects that ammeter directly to a voltage source uh, and you put too much current through the ammeter, it'll blow a fuse. So if your ammeter or your voltmeter is not working, more than likely it's a blown fuse um, that that either someone before you had blown out, didn't replace, or, or, or you blew. And that's okay. That's fine. That happens. Um, we just need to replace the fuse and move on. Okay. So you will also purchase an electronics parts kit. So uh, that electronics parts kit uh, contains discrete electronic components, um, integrated circuits, and a breadboard. So you will work with that throughout the, the semester in lab. Um, so each team will purchase one kit. I think the price is $80. So divide that cost by three or however you want to in your team. Um, and that those components are yours to keep throughout the semester and beyond if you want to use these for a future project, either your own personal project, your senior design project, you'll have some basic electronic parts uh, to work with. Okay, and your TAs will describe um, purchasing that kit, okay? All right, so pre-labs. Pre-labs are important for preparing for and performing the lab. You and your team members will cooperatively uh, work together to design the circuits and answer questions related to the lab. So each team will submit one solution online unless otherwise instructed in the assignment. I think the first pre-lab asks each student to submit their own pre-lab. So follow the instructions in the pre-lab and um, everything will work out. But beyond pre-lab one, uh, each team submits one solution, one design. And please submit in Microsoft Word or PDF format. Those are the formats that we can read and grade. And the pre-lab is due at the date and time shown on Canvas. Okay. I ask again, please read the pre-lab. Uh, you know, when I was a student, I might go through the pre-lab and just try to answer the questions, right? Just read enough material. But, but truly, these pre-labs are meant to give you information beyond what is shown in detail during the lecture so that you will have an understanding to do your design and um, to not get hung up on either design, build, or, or measurement in lab. So I really, I, I really ask that you read the pre-lab. Um, um, it, it will speed up your work, okay? And if you have any questions about the pre-lab, any of the material, stop by office hours, either my office hours or the TA office hours, and we will be happy to talk about those questions. The lab report um, is mainly intended to show that your design, okay, your design or your circuit build meets the requirements. Okay, so you will record measurements um, and you will use your pre-lab as the start for your lab. Okay, so you take your design from pre-lab or your circuit that you worked on in pre-lab and then um, build it in lab and it may or may not work. Many times there are some practical considerations where your circuit might not work. And then you will include your final design based on what you measured, um, built and measured in your lab report. Each team will submit one lab report uh, via the course webpage. Okay, and again, please submit those in Microsoft Word or PDF um, format. And generally, lab reports are due within one week of performing the lab. So check out the due date and time. Again, so you will, you know, let's say lab two, you start lab two, you work it on a Friday, your lab report is due within seven days. It's slightly less than seven days later. Um, uh, it's actually the, the, the next Friday, but before the lab. So I want to make sure you turn in your lab before the next lab, which kind of makes sense. Okay, so um, I, let me go back to your lab report. Your lab report, your lab report, um, in fact, I will show you one, either this this lecture or the or the next live lecture. Your lab report has placeholders. Okay, and those um, 
placeholders are intended for your schematic, your photos, and your measurement data. Okay. And so it's to give you a guide of a very concise um, engineering report that shows, okay, here's your design, here are your tests, here are the results, here's a photo of your circuit. Um, it's it's what you would need to you know submit for any any kind of engineering report. Um, so there's there's again there's no creative writing in it. It's it's really down to the engineering work and your results. Um, the late penalty applied to late reports is 20% per day. So you don't get the grade completely wiped out by a late report. But I do ask that you you submit the report consistently with everybody else, the same consistent due time, and there's a late penalty applied for late reports. Okay, grading. So this is the grading scale here. The lecture assignments will be homework and quizzes. Those are at 15% and 5%. The lab assignments will be pre-labs and labs. We have 5% for pre-labs, 15% for labs. There will be three exams, 20% apiece. So one homework grade, the lowest homework grade will be dropped. So if you miss an assignment, not a big deal. Or if you get a low grade, not a big deal. That assignment can be dropped, will be dropped. You also get one quiz grade, the lowest, dropped. So again, uh, uh, if you forget a quiz or you know get a bad grade on a quiz, doesn't matter, that can be dropped. I do ask that you use these grade dropping provisions for emergencies because we never expect emergencies, okay? Um, so, so please save that for, for emergencies, um, like illness or just any general time, anytime you can't submit your homework or quiz. Clicker questions will count as one homework grade. And so the way this works is that, um, I will give quest clicker questions, not every lecture, but throughout the lectures. Um, and if you answer during half of those sessions, then it, you will get full credit for that homework assignment, for that one homework assignment, and you'll see it in your grade book on Canvas. So you don't even have to get the question right. Just participate, answer, take your best shot, and um, you will get full credit. OK, so lectures will be recorded, as I mentioned, just like this lecture is. Uh, my goal is to make lectures um, easily available um, but also while respecting your privacy, because we are recording this and I'm posting it. So the lectures will include speaker video and audio if you ask questions. If you prefer not to have um, your video recorded, please keep your video off, right? There's no credit for um, turning on your video during lecture. And if you per prefer not to have your uh, name shown in the videos, please don't list your name when you join onto the, the Zoom uh, lecture, the, the Zoom uh, meeting. Um, and please do not show any identifying information if you do not want it included in, in the video. Okay, so basically, you know, turn everything off if you don't want it included in the video. And if you prefer to ask questions um, without having them recorded in the video, just fine. Um, stop by office hours. I will spend as much time as you would like at office hours uh, talking about your questions and, and discussing. Happy to do that. And I do not post office hours videos. So if you want to join office hours and hear what's going on, join office hours, but I do not post recorded videos of office hours. Okay. All right. Recommendations. See Canvas for the assignments uh, coming up. They are all posted. See the PDF schedule file that I will show you that is updated occasionally. Um, check out the videos. So if you have seen a lecture live and you want to review something, you can go back and look at those indexed videos. Um, if you miss a lecture, again, I encourage you to attend the live lectures, but if you miss a lecture, um, you can go back and look at the video, look at the video when it's posted on Canvas. Um, there are practice problems that I will talk about as we get closer to the exams, but generally there's some, there's some practice problems posted that give good explanations, walking you from simple problems through more complex problems if you want something beyond homework to practice with. See the Slack page for, for tips and questions and answers. Um, you can uh, definitely work and discuss homework with others. If you're working remotely, you can get together, work on these together. It doesn't matter. You can post questions on Slack. And, um, and again, others may answer. I will answer. Um, and please contribute to that.
I recommend taking notes during my whiteboard talks. I will work problems at the speed of, well, the speed that I can write and the speed that I can think. And, um, and if you ask questions, right, do that during the, the whiteboard talks and I'll make notes, but I, I encourage taking notes uh, during my whiteboard talks and ask questions, ask questions during class. If you have any question, I'm happy to uh, answer it and also, and also stop by office hours. All right. Okay. So uh, let's take a look at upcoming assignments. You have a pre-lab one coming up, you have a quiz coming up and you have a homework coming up. So take a look at those. On, on Canvas. Now you will download your assignments from Canvas. They're usually a PDF file that describes the assignment. You will submit answers for quizzes and homeworks via, via this form. So you'll go click on the link that says submit quiz one. And quiz one um, will look something like this. The format changes a little bit every semester. But make sure your email address is here. This is the email address that will uh, that this homework or this quiz will be credited to. And this is the email address that a confirmation will go to. So if you if you submit a quiz, you have a receipt. If you submit a homework, you have a receipt. You have your time, you have your date. That's your receipt for your homework. You will get an email confirmation. Um, as a backup, please put your, your CU student ID here, not your mechanical engineering ID. Those are different. Um, and uh, Put your answers in and actually i don't even think this is an option anymore it says send me a copy of my responses i think by default for all the questions it by default you will get a copy of your responses you'll have your receipt for your homework okay uh, let's see so and please do not submit updates to your homework again or your quizzes after the due time that will be considered late all right so let's take a look at Canvas. Um, I want to show you where to find the schedule, where to find the, the, the syllabus, um, where to find other assignments. So let me bring that up now. Okay. So this, um, this web page is Canvas. This is the course web page. And so you should see a page that looks a lot like this. This is the student view that I see. Um, from my login, okay? So go to the home section, um, make sure you have the right course up here. So it's 2023 spring term, you'll see course information, Zoom links, um, Slack discussions, roadmap, et cetera, on down here. If you go to course information, you will find all of my contact information, the contact information of all the TAs and also their, their Zoom links. So when you want to join the TA office hours, you click on this Zoom link, the TA should be there. If you want help with your lab and uh, you, you want to meet in person, that's great, I encourage it. So what you do is let your TA know, right? More, a couple hours before their office hours so they know to show up at lab and help you with your lab, live in lab with the equipment. Okay, so so let them know, give them some advance notice if you want to meet with your TAs live. Otherwise, you can meet with them, you know, on your phone, on your computer, whatever. You don't have to show up live, and they will be uh, they will be available. All that's on the course information section of the web page. Zoom links are here, so here are the TA office hours and the lecture Zoom link, which you should have by now, hopefully. Um, you have. Uh, Slack discussions. So come down here and click on the invitation link that will get you to the course. Do this within the next about three weeks because this invitation link goes stale after roughly 30 days. And I did this about a week ago. So so be sure to sign up for the invitation to get onto Slack. Um, if you don't, if, if the invitation goes stale, you, it doesn't work, contact me. I'll set up another one. We will work it out. Okay, uh, course roadmap is here. I showed you that. That is the all the course uh, major topics. The schedule. So this is a PDF file that I update occasionally. Let me see if I can spread this out a little more. Okay, so this is uh, the, uh, the the entire course on four pages. So these are lecture topics, homework assignments, quiz assignments, and labs. So you will see we had a snow day. This is going to be updated. Um, we are on week 
two for lecture two. And uh, so here are the topics in parentheses. Those are book sections. So you can go look at the re related reading before or after uh, the lecture as you wish. The first quiz is due Friday, January 27th at 11.59 p.m. That should match. It does match. And if it doesn't, let me know the time that Canvas shows for the assignment due dates. So uh, pre-lab one is due Thursday, 126, okay? 11, before, on, at or before 11.59 p.m. And you will do lab one on Friday, 127. So you will get familiar with the lab and with the equipment, okay? So generally the, the lab from let's say lab one will be due right before lab two. So the, lab two, for example, on two, three, right, you'll execute the lab, you'll do your measurements on two, three, and then it will be due generally the day of, uh, that's lab two, generally the, the day of lab three, but before lab, not right before lab, there is a time. So again, take a look at that time that it's due. You can see all the topics um, you can see the exam is on February 15th. So take a look at this. This is something good to uh, maybe even print out and have handy. It does change every once in a while. If a due date changes, I will let you know. If topics change a little bit in the schedule for lectures, I generally don't send an announcement out. But if a due time changes, I definitely let you know. Okay. So there you have the schedule. Um, the syllabus is here. Take a look at the syllabus that has in a lot of the information we talked about today. Lecture slides. So you can click on all these lecture slides. Uh, these are what I will show during lecture. Not every lecture will have slides. And um, I may present material that is not included in the slides. So you'll have the videos to refer to for any material that is not in the slides. Videos will be posted here of lectures and maybe some um, some tips. Uh, videos. Practice problems are here, so click on practice problems. You'll see uh, many of the topics that I th that I help with uh, throughout the semester, and this gives you some extra extra topics there to work on. Uh, here is uh, lab information. So here are uh, here's information on the ITL orientation lab questionnaire. Your lab kit inventory. So everything that you have in your lab kit is listed on this inventory. So if you have a question as to whether something's missing, take a look at this inventory. In fact, I ask when you get your lab kit, check your lab kit against this inventory. It's, it's only a page. Make sure you have all the components um, because if you don't, if you're missing a component and you show up at lab and you don't have your component, it may take a while to get that component from somewhere around one of the shops. Um, on the university and so so as to not waste time check out that inventory make sure you have all of your components here are all the data sheets for every one of your i won't say every one but the major components in your lab kit and uh, solutions will be posted here if you try to click on the quiz and the homework solutions early they won't be available so uh, they will be available right after the due time that's when you can get to your solutions. And then there's some exam review problems here. All right. Um, so take a look at the, the Canvas page. If you click on assignments, for example, let me show them by type so I can show you all the quizzes. So if you want to work quiz one right now, click on quiz one and click on the quiz one PDF file. Here is quiz one. You can print that, work it off the screen, whatever. And then when you want to submit, you click on quiz one, enter your answers, hit submit. You'll get your email reply to show, to confirm that you submitted quiz one. Uh, let's see what else. I showed you the assignments. Uh, let, me, let me bring up one of the labs to show you what I mean about the format of labs. Now I gotta go to assignments. Okay, so this is an example of a lab once it comes up. Uh, your lab report will actually be this document that you turn in. So enter the names of your lab team members there. So everybody who works on the lab should enter their name. If, you, if a team member didn't work on the lab, don't enter their name. Um, if you have to miss a lab, then you've got to make up the lab. 
uh, on, on your own if your partners did the lab separately. So you'll see you'll see lots of uh, tables that have blank values. When you do these measurements as described in the lab, you will fill those values into the table here. So type them in into the Microsoft Word document. Um, here's another table where you will me measure voltages and calculate frequency response. So you'll you'll put those measurements in there. You will see these green placeholders, right? This is where you enter um, a plot or a photo or something like that, some data that gets put into this placeholder as a figure, um, you know, a photo or or a screen capture, something like that. So the intent is to um, take data, put your data in tables, and put your uh, uh, photos, um, screen captures of time domain plots, things like that into these green boxes. And those become figures that you submit in your lab report. Again, uh, you know, take a look at the, the bold text and the red diamonds mean you've got to do something. You've got to submit something here. So follow those instructions. I'm trying to guide you through so that you have a very concise engineering report coming out of the end of a lab. Okay. So to take a look at that. Okay. All right. So we're coming up. Uh, let's see. I'm going to end it just about here. So uh, thank you for watching this course intro video. This will help us um, move forward in spite of the snow day. Um, so, so thanks for joining this. Thank, thanks for watching this. Um, check out the assignments and the schedule on Canvas if you haven't already. That will give you an idea of what's coming up uh, in the near term. Also, see that Slack, see that Slack invitation on Canvas so you can join this, the Slack conversations. Um, and uh, so we'll end this here. I look forward to speaking with you at a lecture on Monday or or uh, or at office hours. Stop on by, and I'll I'll see you at the live class. Have a great night. Have a great afternoon. Have a great morning, whichever it is. See you in class.